Welcome back to the GSL Global Tournament where 10 Roach Miracles don't happen. NMMA takes out Revival. Zest already crushing parting. So pretty one-sided best of threes we have here to start off the group. Yeah, that, those are very, very one-sided, I have to say. Zest showing exactly how to play PvP and just destroy your Protoss opponent, whereas MMA taking pretty easy games over Revival. Revival de definitely being the underdog in this group. It's easy to see by those games. But this next match we're going to get into here is Zest versus MMA. I feel like it's going to be so interesting. Zest showing what he can do in PvP. He's really good at PvP as well. MMA, he's coming back to Korea. How do you think he's going to do in this match? Well, I think he's going to have a hard time. I mean, he, he put up a decent showing against Boss Toss MC, but now he's got to play against the real Protoss champion, Zest. This guy won in the hardest region. And he played against a two-time back-to-back GSL finalist, Sue. So, I mean, you look at that alone and, and see the players he's beaten. Zest has a lot less practice in the PBT matchup, I'd yep, say, probably. That's for sure, yeah. Uh, but he has a lot of good Terran players to practice with because he has some of the best Terrans in the world, Flash and TY, to work with. So, going to this matchup, I highly favor him here. We'll see how MMA can do. It's not going to be easy. Yep. Map is going to be Merry Go Round, guys. Recently added to Pro League uh, roster maps there as well. Three player map, pretty interesting. I, I'm, I'm really curious to see what MMA is going to do against Zest. Well, whether it's a Protoss or a Terran moving on, one of these two players after this best of three will be moving on to the round of four. The other drop store consolation match. This is the GSL Global Tournament today with Wolf and Brandon. Well, up here in the top right in the red. Acer MMA. MMA, a big fan favorite. Already making it to the winner's match. And his opponent down near the bottom in the teal. KT Roaster Zest. Royal Roader, current Protoss champ. A lot of people were saying that uh, Season 1 was a season of Protoss. He ended up being the best of them. Yep. Here's our crowd that came down to watch today. Thank yep. you guys for coming down. That guy on his phone better not have him playing any games. Oh, no. No Flappy Bird. No Candy Crush. No Settlers of Catan. People do that here in Korea as well. Yeah. yeah you watched all of the GSL, 100% of it. Then you can go back to playing your games. <laughs> but for now, watch the GSL. Oh, man. Well, down here for the players, you know, very standard openings. Barracks first into gas. Gateway. Only one gas so far here for Zest. Well, I mean, just looking at uh, these stats here, not a lot of information to go on. Um, if you look at MMA, he's actually like pretty 50-50 against Protoss. Uh, Zest is a little bit like better results, but I feel like when you look at these stats, uh, I'm not even exactly sure where they're being pulled from because if you look at them and if they're just Korean stats, uh, the MMA's like stats in Korea back from a long time ago are pretty dated. Uh, if they're his stats against foreigners and other players online, who knows? Well, it said the 2014 major record. Okay, okay, so maybe just yeah, 2014 major tournaments. How these players did against their respective races that they're playing against now, and uh, when you look at stats like that, you even see Zest ahead. But Zest is playing against Terrans, like we said before, like Maru, like yeah. Byung, people like this. MMA, not really, not so much. Uh, He's definitely playing against Europe's finest, which is nothing to, to shake a stick at. Yeah, but of course. You know, the thing is, you have to really respect MMA because he was beating the best Koreans in the world. That's how he got to GSL finals multiple times. I mean, uh, you know, he's even in the Super Tournament finals back in the day against Polt. I mean, this guy is definitely an excellent Terran player, one of our handsomest that we've ever had. Um, but it's recent results that matter more now. See if he can get this Reaper in here. Zest says no. Nope. Trying to go up the ramp right away. Zest ready with the Zealot and the Mother Support. This is smart because on this map, that's uh, maybe the most likely path to jump up because there's not a whole lot of jump up on this map in general. There's no big sideways uh, position for you to actually get the Reaper in. So he's got to kind of sneak around the minerals here. 
He doesn't have the confidence to do it, though. He's not sure about that. And I guess he's wondering, you know, if I do get up there, is the Stalker just going to finish me off? Yep. He finds this tiny little poke here. See how it's tiered? It's actually really tough to get up there. You have to jump twice. You can't just jump from that, that bottom, bottom low ground. Yep. Reaper today, not so happy with this purchase of the Moon Shoes. No. They are. They do, look, look great. They, they do look very fun, but uh, not being of much use just yet. Were Moon Seth, Shoes ever like really a thing, or was that just like a thing no, in that one thing. Arthur episode? I uh, I actually, well, I didn't buy them, but my family bought them for my little sister, and uh, I tried them a couple of times when I was younger, and uh, they're not as fun as they look. Don't buy them. I, I wouldn't, uh, you know, I wouldn't suggest you buy them. Well, he waits pretty long for this one, doesn't get in. Yeah. Tried to sneak in there, but Zest ready. He knows the Reaper's out there. Keeps Stalkers and Mothership Core in position. If he tried earlier, he might have been able to get in. I respect his caution. Uh, it was a bit haphazard there in the end. So he doesn't know that it's actually just a very solid macro opening here from Zest. He's like rushed yeah. out an Observer, which is these days not as common in this matchup to play so defensively like that and scout. And I think Zest is really respecting MMA as an opponent and saying, okay, well, you're an opponent that hasn't been in Korea for a while, so you probably have a pretty different TVP style. I want to scout you out first in this first game and find out how you play. He's even making a second Observer right now. Yeah, it, it's that, and it's also Zest being confident in himself. He's like, I don't want to lose to anything sneaky. I want to make sure that I beat you in a straight-up game. I don't, I don't want to play risky here. I don't want to go for an all-in. I, I know and I'm confident that I can beat you later on, and he's going to say exactly that. He's going to throw down the Robotics Bay as well as that Twilight Council. Yep. Going for the tech, going for the later game. This Marine is going to be scouted out. I'm not sure how he knew that Marine was over there. I think he just wanted to make sure nobody was there to scout to see if he had a third base. I think he was just thinking like, okay, if there's like an SCV or a Marine over there, he knows I don't have a third base and I'm going tech heavy. So I need to go clear that. And that's why the scan goes down, because as soon as the Marine's dead, he has no idea whether the third base is being planted or tech. Yeah. Unfortunately for him, the scan only saw the robotics uh, facility. And these very, very well-placed forges, as well as the other tech buildings down there, are going to be totally hidden for now. And may playing a little bit in the dark. He's even making... It, look at how many observers he's making here. He lost his first one, but he's just constantly getting them out here. He just does not stop. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he's sending them all over the place. He's going to see any drops that come across the map, any hidden forces. At the very least, if anybody wants to clean them up, he has to find them first, and then he's going to have to use a lot of scans, which is less mules. Four obs on the map right now. That's yeah. pretty unheard of. MMA even using a scan on the main base of Zest. So if you think about that, a lot of minerals lost in mules so far, trying to get some information, trying to reduce the vision of Zest as well. And we're getting a look on the map just how good this vision is. He, he has so much uh, information right now of exactly where the army of MMA could be, uh, where it is going to be in the future. He's going to have every piece of information that he's going to need. Well, I mean, upgrade-wise, MMA is ahead for now, but with all these chrono boosts, that's not going to last forever. Yeah. If you think about it, I mean, he got that engineering bay out a lot earlier, but it's only one, and it's not going to be chrono boosted, and he's actually going to match uh, the upgrades of MMA, Zest, that is, with that double forge, with the command... Uh, not the command center. Command center going down over there, but with the Chrono Boost. This is such a great pylon location. He's going to be able to warp Zealots and onto the low ground to actually go over and harass that third base of MMA. MMA having a much larger army for just a moment. You know, he has this advantage. He comes over and checks again. He's like, wow, you still don't have a third base? Oh, of course, that's going to let him know he definitely doesn't want to commit hard into this location because if he does, he's going to be fighting a two base Protoss army while he's trying to take a third. Goes against, uh, you know, what rules we come to accept as true in StarCraft 2. You never attack while expanding against a player who has less bases than you because he's going to have a stronger army as a result. Or, you know, in some other cases, much better tech. Yep. And this is what you were talking about before, that one pylon over there. He's able to warp in three zealots, and he's going to check at that third base. He wants to see if it's getting up and where it's at. But uh, MMA responding very quickly here is going to kite, not lose anything against those zealots. Well, uh, oh, just a Marauder. Yeah. But very important that he's able to have that Marine scouting for this, because without it, his base would have been uh, delayed, possibly even canceled. He's been very on top of his SCV production, like in the game against Revival. 
That's something that uh, is definitely something to, to like you know note and think about. He's just really on top of his SUV production. Not very many macro hiccups here for this Terran. MMA knows there's a pylon over there on the left side of the map, and he's sending one Marine all the way over there trying to find out exactly where it is. These drops are spotted again, by the way, uh, as an observer is there. So he's able to get right in position with his army. He knows exactly the angle it's coming from. He's going to lose these pylons, of course, but knowing that this is here is so critical. In fact, I'm not even sure if he realizes there's two pylons. It's like a decoy pylon, so you can just have this extra pylon. For later, he's like, hi, you thought you cleared my pylon, but look at this. Okay, no, he does see it. <laughs> yeah. He's going to get the vision. With the medevacs there, yeah, he's just got plenty of vision. And another pylon over there being cleared out. So very nicely done by MMA. Very meticulous with his scouting all over the map. Knows that, you know, hidden pylons anywhere on this map could come back to bite him later on. Wants to make sure they're cleared out. And he actually supply blocks Zest heavily yeah. with that. Zest has to remake a ton of pylons. The 2-2 two -two upgrades are going to finish here pretty soon, though. And that's going to put him a cycle and a half ahead of his opponent. And if he starts 3-3 right away, which he's about to have enough gas for, then... Uh, Bame might find himself in a very, very tough situation. This is uh, this is very reminiscent of like old style creator play. Just very passive earlier on. Two forges, getting that double upgrade out, getting a slower third base, but he doesn't really care because once he gets that double three three, that three three upgrades, he's going to have such a strong army. He's going to have so many upgrades: the charge and the blink, colossi on the map, uh, on the map, storm as well, and he's just going to be in a great spot there towards the later parts of this game. You know, this is, uh, this style of Protoss just always reminds me of Artosis, man. It's just careful, safe, and uh, well-practiced. I mean, he's, you know, he's basically just taking this as safe as it gets, as careful as it gets, you know, taking that third base at the last second, having tech as the priority. Now he's going to do an SCV pull timing here off of three bases. We don't see this very often in Korea anymore. Pyong, really the last Terran to continue to do this. Bomber, of course, switching out of Korea recently too, uh, was another player who was quite well known for this. It's scouted, of course, by all these observers. He just needs to make sure his Colossi are split. There's a lot of Vikings in here, 10 in fact. He needs his Zealots at the front. There's the overcharge on the Nexus. Of course, Storm not even started here. One Archon to help do some extra damage. And I think he's gonna hold this easily. Remember, he has two, two upgrades also. Yeah, the Colossi in the back doing a lot of damage, but you know no Zealots on here at all, and a lot of those SUVs going down, taking a lot of damage. Is it going to be enough? Another Colossi pops out here, doing a lot of damage in the back, but still a ton of bio here. Yeah, Zealots being warped in, though, a lot of them. He's killed a lot of these expensive Colossi, but it's not going to be enough. The Stalkers will blink forward here. And, you know, especially initially, that attack will be like throwing a paper airplane into a fire, Brendan. <laughs> And now he's got an upgrade deficit. <laughs> that's like the that's like the perfect metaphor here because I mean, that's exactly what it looked like. That's basically what we saw here. You know, he barely just does not have enough, especially with the Archon there at the front. I feel like the Zealot placement was not perfect for Zest, but everything else that he did, everything else he set up since he knew his attack was coming from a mile away, was pretty solid. Yep. Four more gates being added to really pump up the economy that he had. Or match the pumping up of the economy he has with that third base that's not mining any gas. And now Zest having to fend off that attack, spending most of his minerals and gas for that. Delayed his uh, upgrades a little bit, but now he's got them chrono boosted out. And now we have only plus two armor coming across here for MMA. Once this 3-3 hits and he's got Storm as well as a bunch of these gateways, almost even going up to 10, this is going to be an extremely scary Protoss player. Well, thank Flash for mules, man, because uh, without those, he'd be, you know, 15 workers down and would have a terrible <laughs> mineral economy right now, but he's got those. Uh, and, and with them, he's able to stabilize with production, but tech-wise, he now has zero Vikings to deal with the Colossi, which Zest obviously realizes as he killed them all. He's very aware of this fact. Uh, he has a few additional Archons, and, I mean, what the one thing that MMA has maybe still is mobility. Uh, and that's one way he could try to get back into this game. Problem being that there's so much observer coverage constantly. And that 3-3, at least Zomei is hitting that pretty well too. Yeah. But he's going to be behind for a time. He had a second engineering bay. He, he knows he's behind. He was checking the upgrades. He knows what kind of style 
Zest is playing and he's saying, okay, I need to get these upgrades out and hope that Zest doesn't go for an attack once this happens. I'm not sure about this engagement. You know, doing decent kiting here is going to force Zest back. Uh, nope. But look at this, on the yeah. other side of the map, doing a ton of damage there. Unfortunately, no stalkers in that mix to blink on those uh, medevacs there. But here comes those 3-3 upgrades, about to finish right now. Warp Prism to come out with them. This is going to be creator-esque, what we're about to see here. Everything about this game feels like creator or Yonghua style. Yep. Totally skipping Storm. Um, that's the Yonghua part of it. He's just going only Colossi. And when you know that, you have way better upgrades than your opponent. And also that you've eliminated his Vikings entirely. Why switch to Templar when you can just keep using the better tech that you have, that upgrade advantage that you have, uh, and try to clench it out? What I really, really like about MMA is he is just constantly trying to outmaneuver this Protoss army. He's like a, a bunch of water just moving around obstacles. He's going to get through somewhere, and he trickles in right now to the natural, whereas a quad drop is going towards the main base. Let's see if Zest decides to turn around here, because this could be a game changer right now. He's not turning around. He's going for it, man. And you know what? He's got nothing in the air, and Terran buildings can fly, whereas Protoss ones cannot. I'm not sure about this. MMA has been at his base for a long, long time. He's taken out the natural nexus, and now he's focusing down that main nexus as well. It does go down, or is about to. Right now, Zest is making his way into the main base. He needs to save some probes, because the Terran damage output is quite high here. And like you said, Terran buildings can fly. This comes into place in a lot of base trades in this type of matchup, in this type of situation, uh, especially. Now, probes over here are actually starting to fight with SCVs. He will lift the command center. He will need the probes to build flying units to actually eliminate those flying buildings. And with all these probes escaped, let's look at the resources here. MMA has 1,200, approximately to 900. Looks like he's, the way he's split his unit zest, that is, is pretty smart. He knows exactly what he needs to kill the stationary buildings. He wants to send the beef of his army to take on the flying ones. This Colossus is a bit out by itself. He needs to make sure he keeps his whole army together because united they stand, but divided they get killed by Marauders. Yep. Forges were upgrading the shield upgrades before, but now they're going to go down. I think he got the plus one for that at least. And now these buildings trying to fly in the middle of the map. That's not going to be too good for him there. And uh, Zess has got a pretty safe base all the way to the left side of this map. So if MMA wants to take that out, he's going to send have to send a bunch of units all the way over there, whereas MMA is trying to land his buildings more towards the middle of the map, where Zest can uh, easily yeah, take control. he's been found too. I mean, Zest has way less buildings, right? He's gonna have to rebuild his production if we get to that point in the game. But I don't know if it's gonna matter here. He's got a much larger army. Look at all those Archons as well. His army is much more expensive too than, than the army of MMA. If you look at the army size at the top right, that doesn't tell the whole story. Starport is down. He's started mining again, but looking at uh, the depots that are be kill being killed at the top right, actually replacing his army is going to take a long time. Either that or him losing a lot of his army so that he has that supply freed up. I'm sure that's not what he wants. Well, here's the engagement. Time Warp goes down, and a lot of these Colossi in the back not being hit at all. He's trying to micro towards the back and do some damage to them, but already even on the ground, Zest taking this fight to him. Yep. Nice micro with the Warpism actually there on those Colossi. It looks like there's just too many Zealots on the ground, even with the last Colossi being targeted down by the Vikings. The Stalkers eventually, with that Archon, finish it off. And Zest is going to take a well-deserved win here in Game 1. Very solid play, very defensive. There's the scan, and that's probably going to cause him to type out GG. That's just like typical Zest, man. He is incredibly confident. He he knew he could take a safe game later on, and once he saw MMA go for that counterattack, he's like, yeah, that's fine. I'll just kill you. Uh, whatever. That attack with the SCV timing didn't do enough damage either. I and mean, he was behind in economy, plus he was behind in upgrades. Didn't have the Vikings anymore. Compositionally, it was in a bad place. And when that situation occurs, you're, you're kind of locked down at a, at a place where you need to use every mule you can for, for your mineral income. That means you can't really scan, you can't eliminate observers. Every scan you use really, really hurts you. And then if you take it a step further, do you remake Vikings? Because what if he just switches to High Templar? Or do you make Ghosts because you're not ready for that either? That means you can't make Marauders. And that's all you really can make. So 
you're in this funky situation where you're like, well, I mean, I wish I could scan the CVs making more High Templar yeah. and Colossi, but I just lost half my SCVs, and I need every single mule that I can gather to actually continue getting my minerals. Yeah, I, I mean, it was it was a nice idea uh, by MMA, I think, to go for that big attack with the SCVs. It, it was definitely very strong, and he knew that against that style, if he could hit before the upgrades really were getting along there, the 2-2, he could do a ton of damage. But once the 2-2 was out, like you said, even the Archon, the Colossi, just a really, really nice defensive setup there by Zest. And he just wiped the SCVs so quickly. Then it yeah. was like, wow, there's a lot of Mirage stuff, so can he break through? The answer is with all those warp ends on the three base Protoss with 2-2 two, two upgrades, no, he can't break through. He got all the gateways up before that as well, so he, he just had way too many warp ends as well. He so. knew exactly what to do. Four observers on the map, always spotting the drops, having that Zealot harassment, Zest controlling the entire map. Now, it's MMA's map pick now. We don't know which map he's going to choose. I could see Waystation here, so that he's hoping to maybe get away with the cheese. I could also see Overgrowth, um, because it's a two-player map. It's pretty standard. He's already had some experience with it earlier today. Uh, I feel like if uh, Zest wants to, he may just cheese on MMA's map pick, because he's ahead in the series. Now he's seen the potential for MMA in a macro game. And if he's thinking about this like, hey, you know, I'm ahead in the series. If my cheese fails and we go to a third game on my map pick, I can just out macro you again. Yeah. I, I feel like Zess is just so confident right now. I don't I don't think he thinks that anyone in this group can take him down. He he has just shown the biggest thing, like I've said it so many times before, just so much confidence in every engagement he takes. Everything he does has a reason, and he knows that he's going to get ahead with it. And if he just continues doing that, if he feels like Cheese is the right answer on this map, he's going to do it. And I, I feel like he would be even successful in that. He looks unstoppable in this group so far. Overgrowth is the map. I feel like Zest might really just uh, play some sort of Blink Stalker timing here. Or an Oracle opening into Phoenix type of drop defense style. If he just plays straight up Observer, Youngwa Creator style with Forge upgrades on two base, MMA is going to have to do something different. The thing is, I just don't know exactly what that is. Yeah, it, it was obvious that he didn't really have much of an answer there. Well, MMA, the fan favorite here, needs a win to tie up the series. If he doesn't, it's Zest. Will be the first player getting out of this group and moving on to the round of four here at the GSL Global Tournament with Brennan and Wolf.